One of the biggest objections that we get from coaches and consultants before implementing AI into their business is, won't people know that it's AI or won't it sound robotic? Today, I'm gonna share with you exactly how we make AI agents as human as possible. I'm gonna share all the secret source, including prompting hacks and LLM settings that will allow your AI agents to be more human than ever before. As you can see on the screen, we're gonna be building an AI appointment setter inside of N8N. Now, if you're not familiar with N810, the link is going to be down below in the description. It is the standard nowadays for building AI agents inside of originally a workflow builder, which allows you to build the most powerful AI agents in the world at this very moment. You can get started completely for free on a 14 day free trial just to try it out. And as soon as you have, you can join our free school community down below to get this very template that you're seeing on screen completely for free. Now, the setup we have here is very simple. We have an AI agent connected to OpenAI. We have window buffer memory, which gives it memory. And we have a quadrant vector store, which is a knowledge base that we gave the AI agent so that it can retrieve answers to questions. Now, the relevant aspects of how to make an AI agent sound more human are inside of the agent, the system message, AKA the prompt that you give the agent. And we're gonna cover that in a second. Number two, it's the open AI chat model and all of the different options that you set up, including the temperature and the frequency penalty. And number three, believe it or not, it's actually the knowledge base because the AI will take a lot of the wording that's inside of the knowledge base and use it to craft its responses. So by making the knowledge base as human as possible, we can actually make the AI sound more human. Now I've just gone ahead and set up the chat message receive node over here so that we can test it right inside of the NA10 interface. Now, before I show you exactly how this agent will react, I'm gonna go into the OpenAI chat parameter settings. I'm gonna delete the frequency penalty and I'm gonna delete the sampling temperature. I'm just gonna be using GPT-40, which is the standard model that I would recommend you guys to use, but I'm gonna leave it at the default settings. I'm also gonna go into the AI agent and quickly show you guys the prompt. This is the simple prompt format that I use for all of our projects. We specify the role and context, the style, the instructions and the task, the script, the objections, and any tools that it may have access to. In this case, we have a scheduling tool that's mentioned in here. We're gonna remove this because the only tool that it actually has right now is the knowledge tool. So might as well keep the prompt a little bit shorter. I'm gonna cover exactly while we're testing it, how you can change this prompt to make it more human-like. So we're gonna do that in a second. For now, I'm just gonna save it and I'm gonna test it with these default settings. And I'm gonna show you exactly how tweaking little changes can make a big difference when it comes to your AI agent sounding human. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say hi. The AI agent is now following the script saying, hey there, I noticed you just filled out a form. Is it cool if I ask you quick questions? I'm just gonna say, hmm, I don't know. Make it a little bit difficult for the agent. No worries. Are you serious about cleaning up your skin? If so, let me know and I can guide you through some questions to help us better assist you. Now, you may already notice right off the bat, this is AI. Like, I can guide you through some questions to help us better assist you. Things like that is just something that AI would say. Now, we're gonna go ahead and fix this in just a second. I'm just gonna continue two to three more messages just to give you guys a feeling of where it is currently at. It's gonna say, yeah, for sure. Awesome. How do you currently feel about your skin? Are there any specific issues or concerns you'd like to address? Again, are there any specific issues or concerns you'd like to address? Very AI-like. My pimples lower my confidence is what I'm gonna say here. I'm sorry to hear that. Clear and healthy skin can really boost confidence and help you feel your best. Have you tried any products or treatments to improve your skin so far? Not too bad, but overall, this is not very human-like. So we want to adjust this now, and we're gonna take a couple simple steps. Now, the first step we're gonna take is the actual LLM settings. So you may notice before I removed both the sampling temperature and the frequency penalty, which are key elements when it comes to making AI more human. Now the sampling temperature will determine the randomness of the AI's outputs. A temperature of zero will mean it's gonna stick to the instructions, the script that you gave it very, very strictly. A temperature of two means it's gonna be very random and wild. So let's actually set a sampling temperature of two and run the exact same thing one more time. We're gonna go ahead and reset it. Meantime, I'm just gonna copy this out so that I have it for later. So we're gonna go ahead and reset this conversation and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. And as you can see by me setting the temperature to two, it is, it went down a completely random path. Like it, it started fine and then it just started talking absolute gibberish. And that is because 
the output is going to be very random. Anything over a temperature of one is not gonna be usable. I would suggest sticking to somewhere around the range of 0.3 to 0.6, in this case, I'm gonna do 0.5 since we're trying to make it as human as possible. So we're gonna stick with 0.5. I'm gonna close it out. I'm gonna say the same things again. Hi, and then I'm gonna say, hmm, I don't know. And in this case, it's stuck to the specific objection. In this case, you will notice it's the exact same as before. So now, as you can see, with the 0.5 temperature, this wording is a lot better than it was before. It just said, if so, let me know, and we can chat about it instead of we can address any concerns that you may have. So you can see that changing the temperature alone already made the agent so much more human-like. A lot of people don't play around with this a lot. And when we build an agent for a client, we really do try different temperature settings, anything from 0.2 up until 0.6. And we test conversations with, with each of them to ensure that it's as human-like as possible. You also want to make sure that when adjusting the temperature, it doesn't mess up how it uses tools because a higher temperature, if you have multiple tools, such as a calendar booking tool, a knowledge base tool, an email tool, whatever the case may be, the more tools you have and the higher your temperature is, the higher the chance is that it will actually mess something up. So that's something that you need to test for the projects that you're building. So now that we have the sampling temperature dialed in, the next thing we're gonna do is the frequency penalty. And the frequency penalty actually punishes the AI for repeating things over and over again in its outputs. So if it says, let me know in one message, the higher the frequency penalty is, the more we're gonna punish the AI for saying, let me know in a message after that. Because an, a very AI thing is to end every sentence the same way. If you need any further assistance, just let me know. If I can help in any, any other way, don't hesitate to reach out. Stuff like that is very AI-like. So by increasing the frequency penalty, we avoid it's saying the same things over and over again. A good frequency penalty is usually either 0.4 or 0.6 in my tests. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 0.4 frequency penalty, which is going to punish the AI for repeating the same things over and over again. Now, another one that we can use is the presence penalty. And the presence penalty will punish the AI for using the exact words that I specify in the prompt. So oftentimes the AI will go into the prompt and it will use the wording that I use there in order to talk to the client. Now by having a presence penalty, it will punish the AI for using tokens that are present inside of the input that we give it. So by increasing the presence penalty to let's say for example 0.2 or 0.3, I like to keep this a little bit lower than the frequency penalty, we're gonna have much more human-like outputs. So we're gonna leave it the way it is for now. We're gonna reset our test and we're simply gonna retry it one more time with the exact same inputs that we got at the beginning. No worries, are you serious about clearing up your sin? If so, let me know and we can chat about it. I'm gonna say not sure. That's okay, if you decide you're interested in exploring ways to improve your skin, feel free to reach out. In the meantime, is there anything specific you'd like to know about skincare? Now, as you can see, it didn't repeat the let me know phrase, but it's actually acting way more human-like than it was before. Now, the next part, now that we have all of the temperature, we have the frequency penalty, the presence penalty, all of that set up, the next part is going to be the prompt, because the prompt really does determine how strictly it sticks to a specific script or how freely it's allowed to unfold in conversations. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna go into the prompt and the style section is really going to be key in doing this correctly. Now, we say here, speak in a friendly tone and use emojis to support it. Something that I would add, do not use the same emojis in following messages. Keep your messages short and concise to make them easily digestible is a great prompt. If I would remove this, it would make the messages a lot longer. Then what we're going to do is speak at the level of a fifth grader, use simple English. And now we're going to add the phrase, avoid terms such as. And here we're gonna use specific terms that the AI uses that make it sound not human, such as better assist you. Actually, in this case, issues is fine, but concerns like to address is also something that's very AI-like. Then we're gonna add another input to say, avoid perfect grammar, intentionally, leave out commas. Now I've added the sentence, avoid perfect grammar, intentionally leave out commas, speak organic way. You want to sound as human and natural as possible. 
Now by adding this, we've already gone a long way to make this much more human-like. Something that you can also do is to ask it to mirror the language of the lead it's talking to. So we can do mirror the language of the lead you are talking to in order to seem more relatable and human. So now that we've added these instructions, there's a very important thing to do, which is in the script section. A lot of people will make a script and they will write it out word for word, such as the first message right here. This message is word for word, and because it's the first message, we do want it to be word for word. However, the rest of the instructions, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've actually just given it the instructions instead of a specific script. If you give it a specific script, it will always stick to that and sometimes it can become a little bit rigid. So it's better to give it inputs such as this. So when I say find out what they have already tried to improve their skin, we can give it some example phrases. What have you tried so far to? Or have you tried anything to help? So we can give it some sample phrases for this specific thing if we want to give it more guidance, or we can leave it completely open to the AI to make its own determination on how to handle these questions. We also want to make sure that we provide additional instructions to make it more flexible in our conversation. So if someone says something random to one of your messages, always follow up with a question to re-engage the prospect. That's just simple appointment setting rules. And then down here, we also have an objection section. So if someone says something random, we say, are you serious about clearing up your skin? If so, let me know. Now, by adding objections, because objections are a big point where AI gives away that it's not a human because it doesn't know how to handle the objections. So it goes back to its default AI mode of making everyone happy and making everyone satisfied. So you wanna add in objections here. If someone shows concern about being sold something on the session, then you would say, no worries, we just want to help you out. So by giving it specific objection inputs inside of the prompt, you're going to allow it to react to all of these different situations without blowing its cover. Now let's go ahead and test all of these changes we've made. And hopefully by now you already have a good idea of what this entire thing looks like as you keep progressing. So we're going to go ahead and say hi. I want to say, hmm, okay, awesome. How do you currently feel about your skin? Anything bothering you or you'd like to improve? Already much better. We can say, I don't know, man, just my pimples. And as you can see, because I said, I don't know, man, and it's mirroring my language and it's talking in a different way, it said, gotcha, which is not something that AI normally does. Gotcha, pimples can be really annoying. It also used a different emoji, which it didn't do previously. It just kept on using the same one. What have you tried so far to help with them? Any products or routines? much more human-like than it was before. Yeah, I've tried all kinds of stuff, but nothing seems to work. I totally get that it must be frustrating. Now, something that's not very human about this is all of the emojis, but a lot of companies do like using emojis in their setting process. So this is really a personal taste. If you don't want it to use as many emojis, specify it in the prompt. But the emojis are very suitable and very nice. If you could find a solution that clears up your skin for good, how do you think your life would change? This is very human-like in my opinion. If you could find a solution that clears up your skin for good, like it's talking in a simple way, instead of saying, if you could find a solution that allows you to clear up your skin. So this sentence is very human-like in my opinion, and I'm very happy with the way that it's turning out right now. And if you just keep on testing this, you will spot certain things where you're like, oh, this looks like it's an AI. You go back into the prompt, you specify the style instructions more, you adjust things, and you get it more and more human-like over time. Comparing the first message we had where it said, are there any specific issues or concerns you'd like to address, to now saying anything bothering you or you'd like to improve, it's so much more natural and human-like. Now, something else to note here is that different chat models will act differently. So if I switch from GPT-40 to GPT-40 mini, or I use 01, or I use GPT-4, or I use 3.5, God forbid, which I wouldn't recommend, it will have different outputs based on which model I use and also based on which LLM I use. So for example, DeepSeek, I made a video on this. I might make another one soon. DeepSeek, in my opinion, is more human-like. It's just a little bit slower when it comes to responding. But DeepSeek is something that I would recommend testing if you are interested in that. And just setting up DeepSeek here, connecting it to OpenAI. We're gonna do that right now. Connecting it to the AI agent, then simply going into the chat and we're gonna test it real quick with DeepSeek. So we're just gonna go ahead and say hi with the DeepSeek chat model right now. Now, as you can see, it's already acting very differently. It's using more emojis than the one before. 
It's also structuring the message in a little bit of a different way. No worries at all. Just wondering, are you serious about clearing up your skin? If so, just let me know and we can chat more about we can, how we can help. Now, it is better than OpenAI was with no settings. But here, for example, we haven't set up any properties. So we haven't set up the temperature, the frequency penalty, the presence penalty. But this is just to show you how differently, for example, the first version of OpenAI without the adjustments reacted to this first version of DeepSeek. So playing around with different models for different use cases can definitely be a good idea for you. Of course, there's also Anthropic and Claude. So you can play around with these. For most of the projects that I make, however, I like to stick to GPT-40 with settings around this range. Now, the next thing is the actual knowledge base. Now, when it comes to setting up a knowledge base in NA10, I have a great video on this channel showing you exactly how to do that. But the content that you store inside the knowledge base, where I have an example here, for example, question, what is the free skincare consultation? Answer, it's a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our skincare experts to assess your skin concerns and recommend the best solutions for you. Now, this is a good knowledge base input, but adjusting the knowledge base to be more human-like can have a great effect in how human-like your agent actually is because it will take this output as input when crafting its message. So if the output from the knowledge base tool is already more human-like, it will allow the AI to be more human-like as well. So here, instead of using assess, we could say it's a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our skincare experts to take a look at your skin concerns, your skin issues, and recommend the best solutions for you. By doing this, it's gonna use this wording more precisely, and it's gonna be a lot more human-like in its outputs. Now, the final way to making an AI agent seem human are random delays. So when you're integrating this agent into a website, you don't really want big delays because you just want to offer quick support, and most people will know that it's an AI agent anyways. If you have it inside of WhatsApp, Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger, SMS, any of these platforms, you want to add randomized delays. Now, whether you're doing that through Go High Level, which I have a video on this channel about, or ManyChat, which I also have a video about, you can use those platforms to set up random time delays and randomize the time between the user sending a message and the AI responding back because humans do not respond with the same time interval every single time. And that is it for this video. I hope you learned something about making AI agents sound more human. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like on this video and you subscribing to this channel. It's a brand new channel, I just made it. So that would really help me out. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. You can get access to all of our templates and resources completely for free in our free school community. And if you're a coach or a consultant doing at least 25K per month, check out our website down below, book in a call and let's see if we can help you solve some pains and bottlenecks in your business. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you guys soon.